This is Bev Cummins. I'm continuing on with my series of books. Uh, Flower Rhymes or Learning Times is the book for today. Um, if you see Aunt Bev writes Flower Rhymes on here, it, uh, it's because I kind of named it for some special people that I was considering um, that I was thinking of them like an aunt. And uh, the anemone flowers are the first flower that we're going to talk about. It's almost spring. The anemone flowers are beautiful and bright wind flowers that grow as a perennial from your garden in spring and fall hours. Large and velvety, they will move and sway with the wind that will sway every day. You will see them open earlier than other flowers in their day, in their way. They have large petals and are part of buttercup blooms. They are wallflowers and are seen yearly in outdoor rooms. They have many origins, but mostly you Think of them like you look on sea anemone. We talked about sea anemone and their relationship with um, uh, Nemo kind of fish. But these are flowers that are called anemones. And they tend to look like the ones that are in the sea. So they have many origins, but mostly you think of them at as looking like sea anemone. These flowers often bloom. We're not seen on our, and are said to be lonely. And and that's kind of, you know, like, because when they bloom underwater, they're not seen. The second flower poem is the constant coronation. The common coronation is hardy and true. It makes you think it isn't going to leave you. Its flowers are not as many as you can see. Florists can tint them any color you want them to be. They came from the east and are 2,000 years old. Hundreds of kinds grow and not all of them are sold. Carnations can make boutonnieres and corsages for weddings or proms to keep and make flower collages. So that's, you know, the constant coronation. It's one of those hardy flowers, and it's beautiful and comes in many colors and can be tinted. The next rhyme poem is uh, The Mannerly Mor Morning Glory. The Mannerly Morning Glory is not only a flower, but a vine, in colors of blues, purples, and reds, which are divine. This vine grows up to heights of ten feet. It flowers, its flowers roll open to the sun it daily greets. Vines produce many flowers that need the morning sun. With care, these vines can be directed where they run. They are fast-growing seeds that grow curled-up flowers. They do their blooming in the daytime in less hot hours. And that's a beautiful morning glory. And you tend to see it more in, in, in the morning. The next rhyme poem is a poppy. The poppy is complicated. It's only strong and pretty. It can be grown and used in any city. You see these red flowers with black centers are on the graves of soldiers near and far. A poem was written about them that makes them think of that way. In Flanders fields where the poppies grow every day. There are other ways to talk about these flowers. They are amazing flowers when used for good. 
the poppies are popular for their red color and black center and their, their remembrance flowers. So that's how you think of poppies. And the next rhyme poem is the Zesty Zinnias. The Zesty Zinnia is an annual flower with colors bright that can even be grown in the color of white. Very kid-friendly plants that grow quickly and last. It is easy to grow from seeds and produce results fast. They can be started indoors or can be an outdoor plant. Butterflies visit your garden and zinnias are pest resistant. They are part of the aster family, which has many types. They are hardy flowers that live up to their flower hype. So there they are. And if you're lucky, in the spring, you get to see a lot of these flowers. And if you're really lucky, you know somebody who grows them or you grow them yourself. They're not that hard to grow. And you can learn a lot from growing flowers. The next rhyme poem is the petulant petunia. And you see that? There it is. Petulant petunia waves at the other blooms. The colors can be anything you can put in a room. They are annuals and bloom from spring into fall. They are pretty bright colors from purple to white. They can be seen in baskets. Blooming is a beautiful sight. Planted by seed late in the year, and you will see petunias coming up through late snowfalls for you and me. These funnel-shaped flowers are impatient to grow. When they do, what lovely blooms they show. And there you go. You have to plant them. To make them come up. We wait for the lovely lilacs. Lilacs are very spring flowers. So there's the lovely lilacs. We wait for the lovely lilacs to bloom in spring every year. For up to six weeks, we can have lilacs both far and near. This flowering shrub was brought from Europe in the past. With very little care, they seem to be a flower that lasts. These perennials continue to come back without a doubt. When you see these purplish flowers, the scent draws you out. Lilacs need sunlight, soil drainage, and pruning to thrive. Care for them with these things to keep them alive. Now, these are what are called perennial flowers. And perennials come back sort of on, on their own. You don't have to, you, you like, replant them every spring. Like the words that something is perennial as is, is the grass is like something that comes back on its um, own, the way it is built by nature. The Iridescent Iris is the next rhyme poem. The Iridescent Iris was grown since ancient Greece. Colorful, shiny blooms never seem to cease. Many iris types are grown in soils of many kinds, in swamplands or deserts you will find. The word means the goddess of the rainbow. The plants are edible only by the insects we know. Their fragrance is used to make some perfumes. You could smell a fragrant iris in any room. And they're lovely flowers. A lot of people, you know, tend to love the colors of flowers. And, and they are just beautiful. Iris kind of means purple to most people. The next rhyme poem is the orange chrysanthemum. You know, this spring is the time when you start hoping you're going to see flowers, even in the late winter, which is what I'm in now. 
late winter. This is March. It's still late winter. Uh, I'm hoping to see flowers. But I can see them in my books and read about them. And so can you. And listen to my poems. The orange chrysanthemum is commonly a mum. In the garden, it's easy to plant, grow, and get some. They are hardy, which means they come up again when the spring is warm enough to flower them. It is perennial and lasts into cold times. It is really in the daisy family and belongs to their lines. There are fall ones that you see way past September. They bloom in just about any color you could remember. They are pretty and full and look like a pom-pom. They might be flowers that you want to give your mom. There you go. There's an orange chrysanthemum. You know, chrysanthemums make me think of um, mums, mum chrysages when uh, it's um, the end of the school year and the band gets on the field and gets uh, their yearly Corsages. At least that's what we did way back when. These are the hyacinth, the hues of the hyacinth. If you'll notice, all these colors are just spectacular. Nature can make better colors than man. The hues of the hyacinth are many and well known. From their bulbs, they stand firmly and stand on their own. They are fragrant and used to make items like perfume. They are members of the lily family and toxic if consumed, so you don't need these. A hardy perennial bulb that blooms again in the spring. This cone-shaped plant is what the spring will bring. These flowers that make up the shape of the hyacinth plant Grow star clusters to produce one flower that others can't. And there they are. And if you look real close at them, the, the flowers that grow off of them look like little stars. The, the next um, rhyme poem is the narcissistic Narcissa. And narcissistic tends to be, you know, like selfish. So... We'll see why they call them that. The narcissistic Narcissa was named for a vain Greek boy who took his joy at looking at his reflection as his main joy. He, he turned into a flower, so the myths say, where it grows alone and stays that way all of its days. They grow from bulbs and show their beauty in the spring. It's a type of daffodil, which sometimes the spring will bring. They are perennial, and you plant their bulbs in the fall. These paper-thin white daffodils do not grow very tall. And they can be yellow, too. The bulbs cannot be eaten, as they are the poisonous part. So keep Narcissa bulbs away from your pets if you are smart. And a lot of, lot of flowers um, have poisonous tendencies, so you have to learn which ones you can have pets around and which ones you can't. And I'm just giving you hints. You need to look up all these before you put them in your garden and make sure you have safe plants and make sure you're not eating something or touching something that isn't safe. The Hawaiian hibiscus is the next rhyme poem. The Hawaiian hibiscus is seen often in tropical lands. Its flowers are amazing when grown by human hands. A hardy hibiscus blooms yearly as a perennial plant. The blooms from the plant are large and fragrant. These flowers are grown wherever you may live. The flower blooms and it has a sweet scent that it gives. A tea is made from the flowers that taste good. It is also good for high blood pressure or high cholesterol in food. 
but only, you know, like you have to know exactly what you're doing and it's better to let somebody professional do it. The Water Lily is, is the next rhyme poem. And there it is. It's like white, white pinkish and it's on the water, you know, and it's a lily pad that a frog goes on. The water lily is a flower grown on ponds and lakes. Floating almost on the top, it has a blossom that takes. It has a sweet fragrance that you will sweetly smell. It looks like a regular lily, but it has color to show and tell. A perfect place for a frog to sit when it's not anywhere else. They grow in the water and are perennial water flowers that you will see in art and nature shows showing their powers. A famous painting, The Water Lilies, you, you will see by the artist Monet showing where the beautiful lilies of water on the flowers can be. There's a, fl there's a painting called The Water Lilies. And it's beautiful, and it's by Monet. And I'm just trying to tell you little things that I know about the flowers. Besides, you know, facts about the flowers. Uh, this is another spring thing in, in the United States. In spring, the, the pink cherry blossoms are a big deal in Washington, D.C., they bloom in the spring. So, in spring, the pink cherry blossoms in our capital bloom. The whole area becomes like a cherry blossom room. On the trees given us to by Japan a long time ago, they were given to Washington, D.C. by Tokyo. They are growing and blooming in other places, you can see. You can even grow your own pink cherry blossom tree. Or go to a festival to celebrate the blooming that goes on. By late May, the cherry blossoms are usually gone. And they are just, they spread from one end of Washington, D.C. to the other. You can look at pictures online of um, what Washington, D.C. looks at cherry blossom time. The Solar Sunflower is the next rhyme poem. Now, sunflowers are gorgeous flowers. They can have yellow centers. They can have black centers. They can have um, other colors. But they are just, they're big flowers. The Solar Sunflower has what other flowers lack. It's big and tall, and we know them as yellow and black. It turns its face towards the sun to get the light that it needs. In full sunlight it grows, so it follows where the sun leads. It's a flower and its seeds are also good for eating. It's a wonderful combination of flower and food meeting. It produces seeds people and some animals use as food. Sunflower seeds and sunflower oil give us fortitude. And that means like some people cook with sunflower oil and it can make you stronger and it can be healthier for you. The next rhyme poem is the climbing clematis. And there's a lot of purple flowers, you know, so that's another one of them. But this one is, is like a vine. The climbing clematis produces a colorful flow. It seems to move up without much room to grow. Blooming until the late fall months, adding beauty. To move up as high as they can is their duty. More than one color may bloom in the same year. For the plant, it seems to need sunlight to be somewhat near. There are many kinds and many colors that grow. They're flowering vines wind toward the sky that we know. 
They are perennial in the garden and grow up and above. Many people choose this as a climbing plant they love. And it's uh, it's a pretty, it doesn't take a lot of room because it's going up. Or, and I think we're going to do one more rhyme home. We're going to do the perky pansy. Oops. And there's a pansy. And pansies are cute little flowers. You know, sometimes you used to see them in little planters and people would give them to their teachers just to, uh, just to give them something or just to have a tiny plant around or as a gift. The perky pansy feels like velvet close to the ground. It has a pretty face. And people like them around. They round three colors and are usually somewhat purple in their face. It shows up in a place and seems to promise grace. The name means thought, and to give it is to say, you were remembered for tomorrow and today. This flower is not a bloom that is very tall. They are annuals that show up in the spring and in the fall. And that's going to conclude my uh, flower rhyme poems. I will continue them next week. This is Bev Cummins reading from her book, Flower Rhymes Are Learning Times. That's part one. Thank you.